Hi, my name is Brianna Breda, and I'm here with the 97.3 ESPN Flyers insider Kevin Durso. And we are going to be talking about the Philadelphia Flyers for another week. So to start off, the losing streak continues. Not what you want to see going into All-Star break, but they do get a little bit of a reprieve getting these next couple of days off. What do you think really was what led to that losing streak before this break? Just the amount of games that they played. Um, it just felt like they were burned out. They were running to the ground a little bit. They were out of gas. They needed this break desperately. And so it really couldn't come at a better time. It just really couldn't come at a better time for where they are. There's even an, and there's even an element to it, and you don't want to sound like these last 32 games are going to head down a stretch that you don't want to see, but they were playing above expectations, and there's a chance this is also leveling out to where they really are in terms of talent level. They've played over the course of this specific losing streak. They've played Colorado and Tampa and Boston, all teams with a with beyond the quality of team with singular players that can take over a game and that have done so. And the Flyers aren't that team yet, and because they're not that team yet, that can also influence how these games go. That if they fall behind, if they're not able to keep up with those individuals who play to the highest level and aren't contained, it's going to lead to poor results. So it once again, just kind of like they were coming into the start of January itself, they're at a crossroads with this They're You know, it's not too far beyond the halfway point of the season that we don't completely know the answer to what kind of season it's going to be just mm -hmm. yet. So it's not like there's, only a short amount of time, and this is just a blip on the radar at this point. They're going to need to correct it effective immediately coming back if that's how they want the rest of the season to play out. If not, there's still a chance because of the way that the standings line up, there's a chance that this does not finish the way that it appeared it might mm -hmm. even 10 days ago. So that's just the thing that you have to kind of weigh out at this point is that, you know, give them their fair shot to correct it because I said that after the four game losing streak that they had at the start of the, that kind of carried into the start of 2024, they've at least earned the right to see if this is who they are. If it's the team that's on the losing streak, if what we saw for most of the season is who they are, they've earned that opportunity. Mm -hmm. If it continues though, there's, you know, teams are hot on their heels again. They're now technically, despite being third in the Metro, they're technically the lowest in point total among the playoff teams in the Eastern conference which means that there's not a lot of distance behind you anymore like it like there could have been. They they win just one of those games over the course of the final week that they played. It's probably a different conversation that we're having, but because of the way that it went, they face a critical point in their season because they're going to come back and virtually the day they come back and play their first game is about 1 month until the trade deadline. Mm -hmm. And what do you do and what direction do you take with this thing? And they've, as much as the front office has stood by, they're not going to do anything drastic. They're not going to be buyers, that kind of thing. Being in a playoff position changes your mind a little bit. And I'm not saying that they're going to go and make some gigantic move, but maybe you keep a guy you you know, wanted to trade or thought you would be trading at the start of the season because you're still in this run. If the next month goes off the rails, they're trading every guy that you can think of that mm -hmm. was on the radar beforehand. So all of that's in play. And But the main contributing factor to why they are on the losing streak that they are has to do with the amount of games they played. It was 14 games in 26 days in January. Maybe February goes different because everything is going to be spread out a little bit more. There's more off days. Maybe that makes a difference. And a lot of guys are playing through something, whether it's or, or, or not able to, whether it's Owen Tippett being out of the lineup for the last three games and or four games, I should say, and kind of trying to figure out where that goes. The hope is he's back at the start of this at the start of the post all star break. And you've got other guys that just have been playing a lot of minutes or a lot of time. I feel like you can see how it's wearing on Travis Sanheim, Travis Konechny, Sean Couturier, these guys that you're used to seeing play big minutes, but it's a lot especially in a month like that. So I think all of those things are factors. So we've talked a lot about goaltending this season. And over the past couple of weeks, we've had Carter Hart take his leave. And in the past week, he has been charged by the London Police Department. So in that sense, Carter Hart is gone from the team, from the season. And this past week, I don't really think everybody saw what they wanted from Sam Arson in his sense of stepping up as that goalie number one. How do you think, 
going forward that this goaltending issue is going to be affecting this whole season. It's going to put a lot on Sam Harrison because there's there's really no choice. They just don't have anybody else actively that's going to be able to handle a number one workload. And they've, you know, the hockey perspective of this aside, obviously, because it's not the most significant thing in, in that, that story by any stretch. It does still have a huge impact on where they work. They were in a rotation and they're no longer going to be able to be in a rotation because I just don't think they're going to put that much onto Cal Peterson. I don't think they're, you know, if they were to call up Felix Sandstrom instead, I still don't think you'd see him that frequently. They're going to give Harrison pretty much the bulk of the starts from here. And I don't know how many that would be 32 games. You know, is it 25 out of 32? And that's really the bulk. That's a percentage we just don't really see anymore. Or do you try to find a healthy balance and say maybe it's 20 out of 32 and because of the, the off days, it works itself out. There's not They don't play another back-to-back until the end of February. That's helpful. It kind of allows you to roll in with Arison for a little while. But I just don't know if that's going to be the healthiest thing for Arison either. I mean, he played every game that was down the stretch, especially once everything was out there. And, you know, it's it's not that he played bad. It's not that it's all on him. That's, you know, John Tortorella said as much, especially with that Boston game. Like, this isn't on Sam Arison, despite him being out after the first period. It, it was one of those things that where another guy who probably could use the break because you just played an awful lot within a week. It's not his usual workload. It's it's an interesting dynamic for Arison too, because they're going they're going from a place where Arison started the year and it was they could barely find a place for him to start. He was getting maybe he got maybe two starts in the month of October. Now he's gonna be the regular number one, and that's all of 50 games later. You know, it's it's remarkable how that's the way it's progressed for him in that sense where it went from we can't find a start to mm-hmm. now he's the everyday guy pretty much. So yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to really put anything else onto it right now because pretty much the solutions that they would be looking for otherwise are non-existent at the moment. I mean, there there's guys in the system that we could be talking about next season, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. And because of that, it's really the Sam Harrison show, and that's going to dictate really where this goes from here because it's going to be, if they make the playoffs, a large reason for it is going to be because Sam Harrison played like he did to this point in the season. So we'll have to see if he can kind of come back re-energized as well, because certainly it's been, you know, this is, this is, this is the guy who like not to take away from, you know, obviously everything that's going on with Carter Hart, but that's also the guy in the room that pushes you. That's the guy that has been kind of pushing Harrison to be better and to make a case for number one in his own right. And now that's gone and you don't have anybody who's banging down the door behind you anymore. <laughs> to take your job essentially. So maybe some of that pressure's off. It can get, it can make you be a little bit more relaxed in your play. You're you, maybe you lose a little bit of your edge in that sense too. So there's all kinds of factors that go into where Arison's coming from. So like you said that, um, that's not the biggest part of that entire storyline. Um, Carter Hart being charged and all of this happening right now, this is a team in a rebuild. This is a team that just had a huge trade because their prospect didn't want to play for them. And now in the midst of all of that, they're having their starting goaltender and who is basically the, was the face of a franchise for so long. How does that affect this entire organization right now? Well, it's impossible to ignore the human angle of it, which is that that's another reason why they probably Mm -hmm. lost the games that they did is regardless of how you feel about Carter Hart at this point, and everybody's going to have their opinions and then assumptions and everything like that. And now that there's actually, you know, a statement from his lawyers about charges out there, then that's going to, it takes the assumption away. It's just Mm -hmm. known at this point, everybody in that room is still human and has gone to battle with him for the course of the season to this point and longer because of his, the duration of his career. You know, like one of the players we talked to after Tuesday's game, when they lost to Tampa was Cam York. Cam York was his roommate on the road that there's no way that that doesn't affect you from a human angle that somebody that you roomed with is now no longer part of the team, Mm -hmm. regardless of how much you knew about the situation or, or not or whatever. So it's, it's going to have an impact because this is somebody that's been around the team, not just this season, but for several years. I mean, I think people kind of tend to forget how early on in his career or at, at what early age Carter Hart was an NHLer and he's been around some of these players for the last six years. And now he's no longer part of this thing going f- going forward at this point. And obviously there's still a lot to iron out with that in terms of formalities and what kind of it means for, 
you know, how he's viewed upon on this team, I guess, in terms of what's the contract status for the rest of the year and all that type of stuff. The league's going to have some decisions to make. That press conference is less than a week away now. So all this is going to iron itself out hopefully soon. But in the immediate, it's just a guy who was there on Sunday backing up and now mm -hmm. is gone. And it it's going to have an impact. So that's where the break also coming is probably perfect timing because it does give everybody a chance to step away from everything for a little while, maybe clear your head a little bit, maybe wrap your head around what's going on and process it differently without having to go through the process of also playing in a game on the same night that it's all going down mm -hmm. and that you're starting because basically the result of everything that happened with Tuesday is he takes a leave of absence and everybody is immediately able to at least connect the dots a little bit at that mm -hmm. spot to, you know, maybe the things that we had heard as rumor are true and how does that affect you just from that human level? So it's hard to play a game after that and to be on at your best and concentrating and doing everything that you would want to do to to go out and try to win that game and stop what was the start of now a five game losing streak. So maybe that maybe what they needed more than anything is a week away like they're on step away. There's going to be more answers by the time they come back and. You can determine from there whether or not to move on. It's it, it kind of like the situation I also look at is, is that, you know, when the trade happened with Cutter Gauthier and he doesn't want to be here and all stuff like that, that doesn't really necessarily affect the guys that are playing mm -hmm. now. It was really easy for them probably, you know, as much as it's impactful to make a statement about what we heard you didn't want to play, so we don't need you. He wasn't in the room before anyway. Most of the guys were able to sit there and say they hadn't even really met him before. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really make an impact on your life when somebody who you've never really met before or communicated with says, I just don't want to play for your team. Then you can kind of brush that off. It's a lot different when you've gone to battle with that player. And that was what I think they were processing last week and why it probably affected some of the play on ice. They probably had, you know, for as good of a start as they had against Boston, the Detroit game was kind of listless. The rest of that Boston game kind of felt like they were dragging through too. like this break mm -hmm. didn't come soon enough. And I think that's the result of what was going on too, is that, they just needed to get away from this for a little while and process it. Like you said, the team is going on a week break, all except for Travis Konechny. Travis Konechny is headed up to Toronto where the All-Star game will start today with the draft and all of the fanfare and everything. Tomorrow will be all of the events, and then Saturday will be the game. What do you think fans can be excited for and look forward to with this All-Star game, especially with Travis Konechny? <laughs> I think, well, I think the draft angle is is a fun and unique way to go about it. Obviously, they've done it before, but it, the last several years, the All-Star game kind of has lacked in terms mm -hmm. of kind of that that interest level and that, you know, and kind of doing something unique. It's just been, here's the divisional teams. This is the way it's going to be. And that's that, you know, the skills competition thing kind of being individualized instead of being everybody participates is a little unique too. And maybe to an extent, like, Travis Konechny is not one of those players that's going to be put on that individual level in terms of, you know, he's not McDavid. He's not Matthews. It's not going to be one of those guys that you say, oh, let's see you show off for two hours. Maybe that doesn't bring people to watch that because of the fact that their player is not involved in it. And and, you know, they're they're not like you or I that are going to sit there and go, hey, here's the best players in the world that are going to just go through this gauntlet of skills competition. You know, it's going to be it, that's going to be interesting. I do. I really like the draft angle, and I think that that at least creates creates this situation where players have to, you know, kind of let their personality show. You know, there's always that kind of who's going to be picked by who kind of thing, and it, it creates that dynamic. I think that that's always fun. Um, but but otherwise, I I think more of what's in, what's of interest in in terms of Konechny is just you know, his presence there and what it represents. It represents the type of season he's had to this point and kind of, you know, the type of player he could be for the core. It's it's really interesting because he's one of those players that's also kind of caught in the middle of all of this right now, where it's he's at an age where you start where you're questioning whether he is part of the picture. Is mm -hmm. he not? His contract is not long term at this point. Certainly the contracts that were coming out over the last week also led to some questions about is he next, you know, is he going to be the next guy that gets a big extension mm -hmm. and, and that they want to build around in this core. So that factors in as well. So I think there's more interest on kind of what Konechny represents in this rebuild and what he represents to the team and the type of season he's having more than the game itself, because just because I think it's lost a lot over the years, but, but that's, 
still, that's just, it's still an honor for him. And I'm sure that, you know, again, for him also being relatively close to home, that's going to be something that's special for him too, that he's going back to Toronto. He's going to that area where we're, we're not far from where he grew up and being able to have a lot of family in attendance. You know, it's certainly different for him now than it was when he was an all-star last time around where, you know, he's got a family now. He's got a, he got two young kids and the ability to share in that with them is going to be different for him than it was when he was going to his first one several mm -hmm. years back. So after this break, they have, like we said, the games are a bit more spread out, but they do have the stadium series coming up. So much to look forward to after the break. What do you think we can expect from them after this break, especially stadium series wise? Well, before that, they don't really get a break from some of the tough opponents. So that immediately impacts kind of how that game's going to be looked at. And, you know, I think that going, you know, with the way that the last week that they just played, played out, there's, I think, you know, we, I don't think anybody would have expected at the start of the season that this potentially the stadium series would be a meaningful game to them other than maybe they're standing closer to the bottom than in the playoffs. It's probably going to be the opposite. Now it's going to be one that has meaning one way or the other. They've got five games before that when they come back from this break to at least try to correct some things to get back into the win column and to ensure that they're one of the teams holding a playoff spot. There's a, I mean, there's a great chance that this is role reversal of what everybody assumed that it would, you know, this would mean a lot to the Devils and it wouldn't mean as much to the Flyers. It's going to mean something to both, obviously, but the Devils might be that team that's on the outside looking in instead. And I think that if you would have told people that four months ago, it would have been something that nobody would have expected. So I hope it carries that meaning because I think it would be, I, I, it would be a lot. I think it would be a lot more exciting that way. It's going to be a lot more exciting going into it. It kind of takes, you know, they, they've played in it, the outdoor angle of it probably has lost a little bit, at least from the flyers perspective, because they've played in so many of these, but sometimes they've played in these and it's held some meaning. And sometimes they've played in them and it's kind of like, th this is weird or it's not like the last one that we really can go back to in terms of outdoor game was Lake Tahoe. And there was no, nobody really in attendance for it. It was kind of just a television spectacle. So it, that kind of didn't have any real impact from a fan perspective. There was no way to really experience it. This has the opportunity to be an experience when they were playing in the stadium series in 2019, they were pretty much at that point fighting for their playoff lives. The deadline was around the corner there. Were, I, I certainly remember going and when I covered that game, there was more interest in whether or not that was Wayne Simmons last game as a flyer because of the trade deadline than there was about the playoff implications. Mm -hmm. It would be way better if you could go into this game and say the playoff implications are what we can talk about with this, that these are two teams that are still in the race that need the points that it's going to matter for both of them. What kind of game are we going to get? And I'm, I'm also genuinely curious to see because of the fact that the last several that they've played have been under different coaching and a different mm -hmm. identity, what kind of game and you know, what kind of outdoor game you get from a John Tortorella coach team that obviously there's an angle of that where we've seen that before because that was Tortorella was coaching the Rangers during the winter classic in Philly in 2012, but teams change over the court. The game has changed since then. Teams have certainly changed. Players have changed. And I'm curious to see if they can kind of meet that identity again mm -hmm. and play in that setting. It, it probably also couldn't come at a better time given everything else also in terms of, you know, if you needed a reason to get amped up for a game, this is one to do it. You're going to be playing in front of a lot more people than you typically would. Yeah. And that's another reason to get excited about that opportunity is that you're going to play in front of a much larger crowd with playoff implications, with the ability to go out and win a game that could, could very well be a turning point in your season in terms of carving out a path for you to make the playoffs. So that's what I'm excited about with the stadium series. Obviously there's still so much more to come as we get closer to it. We got to get back from the all-star break. We've got to see how this team comes out of the break and plays, you know, it, it, the last thing you want to see is that they keep losing when they come out of the yeah. break. And then it turns into one of these things where it's like, well, how long can the losing streak go? And is that going to be part of it? Because obviously five, you know, they've lost five in a row already. There's five more before that. The last thing that people would want to see is, oh, they've lost 10 in a row coming into the stadium series. That'd be a total downer going into that. If they can kind of get back what they found, even just a little bit, I think you know, there's an element of this where you're starting over. Mm -hmm. Like as much as they're coming in, you know, coming out of the all-star break on a five game losing streak, 
there's going to be enough of a gap that it's like starting over. If they could be, you know, if they could find a way to gain points in three out of the five games before that, it at least changes the tune a little bit going in. And that would create a little bit more buzz as well. So I'm hopeful of that so that this way there's that buzz around this game from the playoff standpoint that it becomes even more meaningful and more significant. So we'll be back after the All-Star break to talk about how the team is doing then and then touch a little bit more in about the stadium series. And until then, you can check on everything on 97.3.